Hey there! Welcome to Light Chatting with the Prim Reviews. Today, we're chatting about the HBO original series, House of the Dragon, Season 2, Episode 2, Rhaenyra the Cruel. Okay, so the people behind this series, they didn't get our notes from last season, huh? Because it was way too dark, yet again. I'm sitting up there with the brightness on full blast, and I'm still like, what's going on? I can't see nothing. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the greens. I still don't know how I feel about Aegon. Like, I don't want to like him, because he's a usurper, you know? but he's so funny he be cracking me up he's honestly what this show needs like just a little bit of goofiness in the midst of all this treachery and killing so first we see him he's distraught because his son Jaehaerys was just murdered R.I.P. Jaehaerys and Aegon is completely destroying the model of King's Landing that his daddy took years to make okay is that foreshadowing of how Aegon is going to destroy Viserys' legacy come on now if it ain't I don't know what is so then we see that Laris walks into the small council and tells Aegon in the small council that they found the killer of Jaehaerys and it's a gold cloak who we've been calling blood. Lars is in there questioning up blood and blood is just giving all the tea away he's like Damon paid me it was a rat catcher that showed me around everything and then immediately after he gives everybody up Aegon comes in and puts a mace in his face and I'm just like okay so is he dead or is he gonna get tortured a little bit more throughout the season because I ain't gonna hold you he deserve it so now that Aegon knows that it was a rat catcher that was in on his son's murder Aegon has the nerve to kill all of the rat catchers because blood couldn't say for certain which rat catcher it was and I'm sitting up here like um Helena was right there she was also in the room when Jaehaerys was unfortunately murdered how about you just ask her but no Aegon is out for vengeance and he murders all of the rat catchers and not only that he hangs their bodies up on the wall for all the people of King's Landing to see that their loved one was killed by the crown I think the series is making it very clear that Aegon's biggest fear is being like his daddy because he's just doing anything and everything he can to show that he's a strong leader and it's like okay and when I tell you Otto Hightower was big mad Otto was pissed Side note, every time Otto Hightower gets on screen, my brain immediately sees Rasputin in the King's Men. But anyway, because Otto is big mad, he lets it kind of slip to Aegon that he basically is a usurper. And Aegon's like, oh, it's like that? Give me that hand back. Otto stay getting fired, don't he? We'll see if he comes back, but he stay getting fired. And Otto's like, you wouldn't dare. And this is the funniest part to me. It took me out. Aegon says, oh, I have dared. And I find it stimulating. Child, Aegon is so funny. I'm sitting here tearing up now just thinking about how crazy Aegon is. So, okay, I'm kind of glad that he didn't get that Dracarys last season because I'm here for these jokes. So Aegon tells Otto to give the hand to Sir Christian Cole. Sir Christian Cole is in Aegon's good favor now because Sir Christian Cole came up with the bright idea to send Sir Arik to Dragonstone to pretend to be his brother Sir Eric to kill Queen Rhaenyra. The whole interaction between Sir Cole and Sir Arik was bananas to me. Cole is sitting up there trying to guilt trip Sir Arik for the death of Aegon's son as if Sir Christian Cole wasn't over there getting it in with Alicent when the baby was killed. Misplaced anger Cole. What's wrong with him? He stay mad hating on Queen Rhaenyra because she didn't run off with him. Who would do that if they in their right mind? But he basically doing the exact same thing with Alicent. Is it because Alicent's husband is dead now he's okay with it? Boy bye. Anyway, we'll come back to Sir Arik's mission a little bit later. Let's move on to Aegon's brother, Aemond. Child, Aemond has all the mommy issues. Aemond finds out that Damon really put the hit out on him, not his nephew Jaehaerys. Aemond is telling who I assume is his favorite sex worker because he was also with her when the hit was put out. But anyway, Aemond is laying up in her arms in the fetal position, naked, talking about how he's surprised that Damon sees him as so much of a foe that he got to put a hit out on him and it's like boy bye don't get your head that big so Aegon has the daddy issues and Aemon has the mama issues and I see why he got the mama issues because Allison really is the worst it's crazy because it was just last episode that I was like Queen Rhaenyra is such a great mom she see Jace over there crying over the loss of his brother and she gets up and immediately hugs him Allison the exact opposite okay she walks in Aegon's room see him crying like bawling crying and she looked for a second and child she walked right back out the door a cold piece of work she'll never be there for that poor boy 
Last season, she was the same way. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, didn't she call him stupid when Aegon asked if she loved him? Man, she is a cold piece, I'm telling you. But I can't really expect much more from her than that. Her daddy pimped her out to the king when she was a minor. Otto didn't treat Allison like a daughter that he truly loved. He treated her like a chess piece, basically. Pawn to E4, whatever. Anything to get the power that he was oh so craving. And even with that being said, Otto was still more comforting to Allison than she ever been to her son, at least of what they done shown on screen. Plus, Allison lost her mom when she was real young. I don't remember how young, but who knows if that has anything to do with it. I don't know what Allison beef is with these kids. Maybe it's because she didn't really like Viserys like that. Maybe that's why she's taking it out on the kids. I don't know. Anyway, so let's move on to Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen, the first of her name, Queen of the Andals, and the Rhoynar, and the First Men. Lady of the Seven Kingdoms and the Protector of the Realm. So us as a viewing audience, we already knew that Damon paid blood and cheese to kill Aemond because last episode, Queen Rhaenyra, she walked into her small council stage left and was like, I want Aemond Targaryen. And then she immediately exited stage right. That's it. That's all. But now she want to be mad at Damon because he tried to do what she asked for. Please go ahead and let me know if I'm out of line because unpopular opinion coming in 3, 2, 1. I blame Queen Rhaenyra for Jer Harris' death just as much as I blame Damon. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? She gave clear instructions that she wanted Aemon. Damon, being the kind-hearted soul that he is, he gave Blood and Cheese the same clear instructions. Now, should Damon have talked it over with the council and Queen Rhaenyra before he went out and hired Blood and Cheese? Absolutely. But Queen Rhaenyra, she didn't even stick around to even have no conversation. And now, she blaming Damon, and I don't like it. Damon clearly thinks that he's the best leader that the Seven Kingdoms would ever see if he actually became a leader. Sitting over there calling Viserys weak and saying that Queen Rhaenyra is only the heir because Viserys was afraid of how Damon would outshine him if he became the king. But at the same time, I feel like Damon does want to support Queen Rhaenyra. But like John Mayer say, half of your heart won't do, bro. And I think that's why he keeps screwing stuff up. Instead of Damon having 100% pure intentions, his intentions are tainted with the fact that he wants to be in charge. You can't lift somebody up, Damon, while still trying to balance the chip on your shoulder. One of the two gonna fall. And Damon, just because you think you a ruthless killer that don't mind getting your hands dirty, that does not mean you worthy of the crown. Get it together. So Queen Rhaenyra, she has it out with Damon and she tells him that she can't trust him and she probably never could trust him. But Damon's defense is, he's the one that put the crown on Queen Rhaenyra's head, so he got to be for her, right? And it's like, no, you ain't really for her. When she was calling for you while she was in labor, you was out there trying to make war plans because you really want to be the king consort, since you can't be the king outright. But when Damon swat that stuff off the table, like, tink, tink. Y'all, I had to replay that thing like three times. I laughed so hard. Damon's a fool. But the sadness all over Damon's face when Queen Rhaenyra called him pathetic, ooh, I felt for him. That hurt me. But back to my original point. Queen Rhaenyra said she wanted Aemon Targaryen. And Damon, ill-advised as it may have been, tried to deliver Aemon Targaryen for her. As much as I think Damon is wrong, I think Queen Rhaenyra has a whole lot of accountability she need to be taking in this situation too. It's like she's so busy looking at his faults and the stuff he ain't doing right, she ain't taking into account the fact that he trying to do the right thing, he's just screwing it up. And even after all of that, calling him pathetic, I think Damon is still gonna be on Queen Rhaenyra's side. I know that ain't a good defense, but that's all I got. Anyway, it was cool to see the ladies sticking together though. Bela and Rhaenys are both fully down for the queen. I was kind of questioning whether Rhaenys was going to get behind the queen or not, but they are. They both are down for her, and I love to see it. Lastly, let's go ahead and talk about Sir Arik's mission to take out Queen Rhaenyra. First of all, I don't know how old the twins are at this point, but they started being a part of the Kingsguard at only 18 years old. And for whatever reason, I was a little bit shocked about that, but... Anyway, so Sir Arik, the one sent by Christian Cole, is able to get into Queen Rhaenyra's chambers right before she goes to sleep. I'm guessing that twin bond is a real thing because Sir Eric, the one that actually works for Queen Rhaenyra, immediately feels that something is off and is able to stop Sir Eric before he can kill Queen Rhaenyra. Their fight was so painful to watch. I would hate to be in a position to have to kill my twin 
to save a person I took an oath to protect like that had to be the most difficult task they've ever had to do and when I say they are identical twins I could not tell which was which at all I'm sitting up there looking at the facial hair like he got a little bit more and he got a little bit more tapered child by the end of the fight I couldn't tell which was which it seemed like Sir Eric from the Queen's Guard got his leg cut and so I was trying to keep track of which one had to cut on his leg but I couldn't tell one of the twins finally kills the other one and after seeing what he did to his own flesh and blood he ends up falling on his own sword at first i was thinking that was sir eric sent by christian cole because like i said i didn't see the cut on his leg and i was thinking that sir eric was the one that had the cut on his leg so if it was sir eric from christian cole that fell on his sword it would make sense because he at this point sees that it's too late to take out queen rhaenyra and he's not going to be able to make it back to the usurper king's guard so that's why i'm thinking he would have fell on his sword but when i think about the last words the twin said he said your grace forgive me and that sounds like something sir eric from the queen's guard would say so i'm just curious which twin do y'all think fell on his sword do y'all think it was actually sir eric from the queen's guard that killed his brother and then fell on his own sword or what i don't know let me know what y'all theory is so once again sir tylan lannister makes it to my favorite part of the episode when he says were you also threatening your grace child i fell out i said tylan why is you being so petty right now that was uncalled for he didn't have to say that to that man but I was here for it. Okay, and my last favorite part was seeing the bond between Bela and Jace. I love seeing those two together, and I love that they're still supporting each other. That is so cute. But anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this episode, and until next time, let's chat, friends.